Welcome back to Airborne Productions. Today we're going to be looking at my 1974 Yamaha two-stroke DT400 wrap bike project. This bike originally started as an enduro bike. It was originally offered in a 360cc engine and later turned into a 400cc engine. This happens to be a 360, but I also have a 400 top end that I could put on this thing. For now, I'm gonna leave it how it is, but we'll see about upsizing in the future. Hey, can I borrow this? Thanks. I'm using benchmark abrasives for all my grinding wheels and flap discs. I did a review on their products right here. The front end is off a completely different machine. The original forks were much shorter than these. This front end is off of a 1987 Yamaha YZ252 stroke. The forks are much longer, which gives it a raked out chopper style look. The bars are inverted clip-on. They're originally for a cafe style bike and should be on the other side as well as turn upside down. These angle up from where they're connected. In their proper configuration, they should angle down, like I said, for more of a cafe style bike. However, since this bike sits much more upright and natural, I figured it was only better to have the clip-ons facing the opposite direction, making them upward and more comfortable. I'm not sure exactly what bike this tank is from, but it is old school and badass. I found it at a local vintage motorcycle yard. Since this bike is a two-stroke, it originally came with an oil injection system. However, to simplify things, I removed that system. I'm just running straight premix into the tank. The seat is homemade but I do plan on remaking another seat. The rear wheel is off of the same 1987 Yamaha YZ250. The rear fender is just like the tank, off of an old school motorcycle, but not exactly sure what bike. The original owner had began prepping it for paint. You can see Bondo in the finish. I decided to leave it unfinished for that ratty look. I love it. The rear shocks are off of what I think is a Kawasaki 110cc but not exactly sure. They were lying around and they fit the length perfectly, so I threw them on. We found this old pipe as a junk piece and welded on another pipe to it so that we could use it to at least run the bike. Now that I have more equipment, including a TIG welder, I plan on welding up a proper expansion chamber. Here you can see the aftermarket Mikuni VM30 carburetor, as well as a custom Home Depot intake system. I found this old horn at an auction bought some rubber pipe from Home Depot and a couple of fittings and it mates up to this carburetor perfectly. I also threw on a new larger front sprocket as well as a new chain. This will allow the bike to be ridden on the street more comfortably. This bike is currently set up with a suicide shift mechanism using the left hand to shift and the left foot to activate the clutch. This is completely backwards from a normal motorcycle. This lever is from some sort of old piece of machinery or something. I'm not exactly sure. Again, it's another cool mystery piece. This piece of twisted steel that connects the shifting lever to the shifting rod of the engine is my first attempt at blacksmithing and is indeed a piece inspired by Indian Larry. A younger brother found this on the side of the road and asked if we could mount it on the bike. I told him the only way we could is if he could figure out a way to do it without screwing it or taping it or anything like that. He found a way. It's been here for three years now. The braking mechanism is off of a 2002 Yamaha YZ250. Another two stroke on this thing. So that makes three different two strokes that have been put together to make this bike. It is not completely mounted yet. That's one thing I plan on doing. I have this highly custom piece of steel right about here. A couple more things need to be mounted as well as attached to the brake lever. We had a huge dilemma with the headset. The bearings were from the old bike, which were much smaller than the ones that were for the newer 1987 front end. What we did was order new bearings for the triple clamp. Then we bought some scrap steel pieces and turned them down on a lathe to get the inner diameter, the exact dimension to fit the bearing races for the newly purchased bearings. Then we crudely welded these pieces of pipe on the top and bottom, and fit the bearing races in, slap the front end together. At the time, all we had was a little MIG welder running flux core. So the welds are pretty ugly, even though they're strong as hell. 
My plan is to grind them out and re-weld them with my Vulcan TIG welder, which I reviewed recently here. We cut out this gusset right here in order for the gas tank to properly clear this top tube. My plan is to weld a single gusset in here in order to strengthen this front end. Another step I need to take to mount this gas tank is to grind down this area down here in order to provide proper clearance for the bottom of the tank. In order to do so, I plan on welding a reinforcement in here to give this bottom piece more strength as I remove material up top. A lot of these parts are secured with some galvanized steel and some crude MIG welds with a flux core MIG welder. Now that I have better equipment, I plan on redoing these welds. This is a perfect example. Poor welds, like I said, galvanized steel, which shouldn't be welded without prepping it first. I plan on removing this and putting plain old mild steel on it. That way it'll rust through and give it that ratty look. Although this bike doesn't need any help in that department. If you look at the top of the triple clamp, you can see where we milled off the original mounting points for the bars as it was a dirt bike mount. Now the clip-ons are mounted straight to the forks. This nut is secured on top of three washers. The problem with using washers as spacers is that they tend to act like a deck of cards and fall over as you see here. I use the same washer spacer method here and here, which is fine for some mock-up in order to roll the bike around. But at the end of the day, I want to do it right and turn my own spacers in place of the washers. The foot clutch is another mechanism that could be redone a little better. This one works, however, I want to do a couple things to modify it. First off, this cable rubs on this part, which means I need to figure out a way to remount this cylinder higher up so that the cable runs out of the way of this part. I also need to make a stop so that the foot pedal does not go back too far like so. I also need a little bit better shape cylinder that will fit this properly because this does come out and maybe something to secure it in. Lastly, I'd also like a spring on this in order to return it back with more force. I need to tighten up certain mechanisms such as the suicide shifter. I am holding the shifter in place where it meets the engine but the handle of the shifter is still moving a bunch. This is caused by a bunch of unnecessary play and loose tolerances. I plan on tightening all of this up so that the bike shifts a little bit more solid. Like I said, it works, but it could be better. If you lift off the mask, you can see my headlight housing along with some homemade mounts used from an old TV stand. The headlight is a one-of-a-kind headlight which I cannot find any information on no matter what I search. I plan on keeping this configuration, however I will probably re-weld the mount in order to clean it up a little bit. The tires are some enduro tires that fit perfect. The front wheel looks huge as it's still a 21 inch wheel from the old 87 YZ250, but I love the look. I need to add plenty of small things like the lights, finish the electrical, some grips, but all in all I'm very happy with this machine. Yeah there's plenty of work to do, plenty of welds to grind out and re-weld, but this has been a very fun project so far and I am very excited to finish. Many of the shortcomings on this motorcycle are due to our lack of equipment early on. Like I stated earlier, we just use a small MIG welder with flex core, so the welds work but they could certainly be cleaner. I want this bike to be ratty. I mean, that goes without saying. However, I still want it to be solid and built well. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe. We'll be doing some more follow-up videos as we piece this bike together. Also, if you have your own ideas of things to add or parts to use, feel free to add a comment. I'd love to see what you guys think and maybe even add some creative input from the audience. Thanks. I'm rocking benchmark abrasives for my grinding. I'm using I'm using benchmark aggressive aggressive aggressive. I'm using benchmark aggressive